Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and let's make a card. Yes, I haven't done much at all this week and because it was so horribly hot I didn't even do a Tuesday tutorial. So let's make a card. Right, I'm going to use Surprise Creation Slimline Dies. I'm going to be using this straight edge one. I'm going to be using a layering flower set with leaves and stems that I received. And I'm also going to be using the two stencils, um, or one of them. I think I'm probably going to use this one that I showed you in my haul this week. So I'm going to move all of this out of the way, keep this here, and I'm just going to run off and die cut and I'll be straight back. Okay, so I now have cuts. I'm going to do watercolour. Yep. So I've cut a black background, which may not be apparent. I'll stick my finger there. And I've cut the um, the top of the card in watercolour cardstock. This is that stuff from Walmart. I'm just going to move the black base out of the way. I've closed my blinds because it's bright. I've got a little scrap of cardstock for testing watercolour cardstock, sorry. My stencil that I said I was going to use, and that covers that quite nicely and I've also cut the flowers in watercolour cardstock and stacked them up and I've done the same for that so that I don't get confused and we have two centres and I'm pretty sure you can decide which flower has what centres but they have two little pieces that create the centre. I've also cut two stems and three leaves so that's what I've got there. Now, watercolour cardstock, that means I'm going to watercolour. But this bit, I'm not going to. I'm going to use Distress Oxide in black soot. So I'm just going to scoot my die cuts out of the way tidily so that I don't lose my bits and pieces. Just pop those off to the side there. And um, I'm going to ink this in Distress Oxide black. Right, now, I've got my scruffy little silicon mat here which I'm going to put down and it has actually got some glue on it that's uh, that's peeling off. I do love silicon mats, in fact I'll turn it over because I think that side's a little bit cleaner. Right, I'm going to put that down there. I'm going to uh, make sure my stencil is equal and that I like what I'm seeing through it. Yeah, I'm being quite bold here using um, black distress oxide. I do like the way it dries though because it's quite matte so I'm just loading up a regular tool here. I haven't glued this down. I know I'm naughty but I am holding it with my fingers and I'm just gently going over the top. As I was saying I, I do like this kind of like matte. It's almost a smoke grey. It doesn't feel like true black if you know what I mean when it's dried. So I just thought, be bold, be brave. So I'm just doing it very gently. I bet this would be quite nice done in this colour shading as well for Halloween, actually. It's going to hold that bit there. And uh, I am going to run off and wash my hands in a minute because I just know that they're going to be awful. I'm getting down into that bit and then I'm going to hold that bit, make sure I haven't left any bits out. Got down into the corner of that, make sure that's nice and tidy. But it is, it's more like a, um, a charcoal grey. Right. And even paler off the edge there. I went a bit too light there. Yeah, if it's a bit streaky, who cares? Right, ooh. Well, that's quite striking, isn't it? I think I'm perhaps a little bit too pale there. So I might just match my stencil back up just to uh, do that bit. There. Let's go in there and just darken it up. There, 
that will do. So there we have a nice striking, well, this watercolour cardstock isn't like a sort of pure bright white, it's, um, it's a little bit of a creamy off-white. So that is going to be the background to the flowers. Now I'm just going to scoot off and wash my hands and wash this and I'll be right back. Right, so I did that and washed my hands, and this is uh, virtually dry. But isn't that a lovely striking stencil? I absolutely love that. I mean, the other one as well is gorgeous. That's the other one that comes with it as a set of two. I mean, you could put that down and uh, go over it with something lighter, and it would look absolutely gorgeous. But anyway, right, so that is the background done and I'm going to pick that up and that is the one that it's going to go on top of so it's quite striking. And now I want to decide what is it that I'm going to be um, colouring my flowers with. What colour do I want? Do I want them yellow so that they sort of like, it's going to look a bit bee, isn't it, if you know what I mean, black and yellow. So I think what I'm going to do is use the watercolours that I got from Tuesday morning and I'm going to mix up some pinks. Now with these kind of layering flowers you go light to dark so your biggest piece should be your lightest piece coming to your very darkest piece which is at the top. And I'm just trying to think where I just put my ink blending tool. I just put my ink blending tool down somewhere. Oh, well, never mind. Well, I, I forgot to wash this. I've got to do that before I watercolour. Back in a second. Right, so I've done that. And uh, I'll share my humidity with you. How's that? <laughs> There's some humidity. There we are. I've just shared it across the world. Wherever you're watching from, there's a little bit of Florida humidity for you. Right, that is my little scrap of watercolour card stock for testing. This is a very small, squatty, refillable um, water brush for doing watercolours from AliExpress. Now, these do screw left-handed, not right-handed. So remember that if you're ever fighting to screw it back on or unscrew it, it's for left-handed people. Right, so I'm going to be using one of those. I've also got a little brush in case I need it. And reaching across the desk, I've got a Dollar Tree sort of like, I don't know what you call them, um, a foam plate like styrene. And I've got a glass of water. Now, my camera is so low that um, I'm going to have to move some stuff off to the edge. Otherwise, you're never, ever going to see what I'm doing. Right, so I've got glue dots here. I don't know why I've got glue dots there. But I'm just putting my water off to the edge. And I hope you can see that. Right, so I've got my brushes. And what I want to do is do this in pink. And as I said, with layering flowers... I'm just making sure that I'd hit record there. Uh, work from light to dark. So here's my piece that I'd stacked up. And there are three of them. So I know that I'm going to do this one light, that one medium, and that one dark. I haven't decided on the colour of the centres yet. I might do those black to tie back down into the background. And then I've got my watercolour paints here that I paid $4.99 Royal and Lang Nickel from Tuesday morning. And I'm just going to open the box. Right, what have we got? I'll go tearing into it. And I'm going to go for the red, which, what are they calling that? They're calling that Crimson Red Lake which I think is going to be preferable to vermilion, which is a bit orange. And because I want pink, I need to get the white out. So I'm going to do that. I think these are a really good buy, actually, for 4 99 because, as I said with my haul, I think I did the haul on Monday, um, you can squirt a little bit into uh, a squirty bottle and uh, spray it on as ink. Right, so I'm hoping you can see this section here and you only ever need a little bit of red and it's got a little foil cap on it and you've got to peel it off. So I'm just going to semi-peel mine because it might prevent it from going hard. Can you see how much I just put down there? That is a huge amount, huge. 
And now I'm going to go half and half with the white. So I need to peel that up as well. And they're uh, peeling off quite nicely. Ooh, that's got a little bit of uh, yuck that just came out with it. But I'm sure that won't matter. So I'm kind of maybe put a little bit more there. 50-50 of the red and white. And I'm screwing my lids on because I know what I'll do. I'll put my elbow on it and it'll squirt everywhere. So I'll just pop those two there. And I'm going to use this one as my blending all together brush. Can you see my water just went a little bit yellow. So it's a good job that I dipped it in there. Right, I must have used some orange or red on this brush before. These are Dollar Tree brushes, so, you know, once again, you haven't got to be all expensive about your stuff. And I'm blending that up, and that is quite a dark pink, and that's okay. Because as I go through, I'm going to water it down. All right, just make sure it's all squished together and there is absolutely sufficient there to do these flowers. So that's what I was saying. It's going to last you an awful long time. Right, so that's blended. There are a few streaks of red hanging around. I don't know if you can see that, but that's okay because uh, that might add to the look of the flower. Who knows? Right. And now what I'm going to do is I've got my three pieces here for that flower and I'm going to do this one first. But while I've still got exactly the same colour, I'm just going to move those pieces off and I'm going to do this one and keep those together there. So first up, I'm going to wet my paper. And it's always a good idea to wet watercolour paper to prime it to take the paint because if it's dry, um, you kind of like get a full almost acrylic paint coverage, which may be what you want, but it's not what I want. So and I've got a piece of kitchen paper as well. Look at that. Ugh, I'm so organised. Not right. So I'm going to let that soak in just for a second. And I'm going to go in with my water brush. Now my water brush... I want to wet it so I've just squeezed some of the water down the barrel there and I'm picking up this darker pink and I'm just going to put it down where I want it and I'm just dotting it and letting the water carry it to the edges so absolutely no perfection involved in this whatsoever it's not difficult now you can see with this there is less water on this one so it's not actually carrying it so I'm going to put some more water down on there. And then I'm going to go in with what's on my brush. There. I put some more water on here and I want more water on here because I'm going to blot it. Right, so I'm going to get my kitchen paper. And there's already um, a lovely grain in this watercolour paper. So you're getting a nice pattern. I need to put a little bit more stain into this. And then lift it. That's better. Right, so... I've got my colour exactly where I want it, which looks incredibly blotchy, but just don't worry about that. And now with my clean brush, or cleanish, I'm going to go back over that and push out all of the colour that I've got there as much as I can so that my cardstock's not looking truly white. It's got a sort of blush pink to it. And that one's all right, actually. Right, I'm just going to let that dry and I'll be right back. Right, so they're still happily drying. So now let's get back in to the second layer, which is going to be darker than the first layer. So 
you want very little water involved in this because you do want it to be much, much darker. There we go. Full coverage. I mean, whenever you're using white, because white has fillers, um, you don't really get translucency in your watercolour. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I ordered myself some metallic watercolours, some handmade ones from AliExpress, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting my hands on those because they'll just look great as well on um, black card stock. Right, so I don't want to leave any bare edges on those. I think I've got it all. If not, not to worry. Right, so I'm going to clean those out of that puddle and I'll be right back. Right, so now it's time to do the darkest elements and I can see I've still got quite a bit of red up the edge here that wasn't completely mixed in. So I'm hoping this is going to be the one that will make it look darker to all of the others. And of course what's nice about doing it on the plate is I can just throw it away. You can of course reuse it because it's foam. Right, now that has more depth. Now there's a little bit of red down here as well. Just around the edges where I didn't stir it in. So I'm hoping that's going to be darker. Now when these are dry, I want to go all around the edge with some um, black oxide just to darken them up. Right, so all I have to do is the leaves and I'm just going to do those flat in one colour of green and I'm just leaving all this to dry and I will be back. So these are still happily drying. There's just a very slight dampness in them and I've decided I'm going to edge them. Um, I'm going to do the flower centres with my yellow Posca and I'm going to go around the edge of all the flowers with the black Posca because I think when I look at this background, it's really stark and I think it can handle it. So I'm going to give that a shake. I'm just going to test it out and it's working. And I'm going to do it for all of them. So I'll show you one and then I'll go away and finish. What I do is I hold it down. I'm going to try and turn my hand over to an angle here so that you can see hold your piece steady and you're really drawing on your mat that's how you need to think about it and you're just catching the edge so if I pick that up and show you you'll see see how it's just caught the very very edge if you've got a little bit missing where it's a bit you know sort of steep you can just go in and touch it with your marker so you you've actually left your design down there on the mat and uh, it's really easy to do just as long as you've got your fingers there and you're holding it steady I suppose it could be a bit like you know I've just gone off on the edge there but that's okay I have healed my error um, like using a distress on the edge but this is uh, a little bit tidier, gives you a finer line. If you've got a fine line pen and you want to use that, then you can do that as well. But I hope you can see that. Put my hand there. It's just got a black border all the way around the edge of it. And you have to forgive my silence because you know what I'm like. I kind of like get carried away and get stuck in and then I forget everybody's there. Right, and I'm going to come up here and do that edge. I don't think I did that one. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, just that inside edge left to do. So just hold that steady and guide it around. Let's have a look. 
So now I've got that gorgeous black border, which I think is going to kind of, you know, just contrast really well onto that because it's so striking. Right, I'm going to go around the edges of all these and I will be back. Okay, so I've done all that, and now let's glue these together. So, just wait for my Dollar Tree glue to squidgy on down the bottle. It needs filling up, I think. And uh, decide where we're going to place these. Now, to be honest with you, it doesn't, um, it doesn't always bother me if I've done something exactly the same as a picture. you just got to uh, do your own thing sometimes. Try and feel where that goes. Um, it may or may not be right, but I'm going there. I'm quite happy with that. And really, really quick to glue together. And you can kind of see the shape of this one, so you sort of roughly know where it goes, if you know what I mean. I'm just going to pop that there. Squeeze up some of that glue. And you can see how striking the edge is. I'll actually um, pick one up and show you in just a second. Leave that would go there. That feels right. And then I've got this tiny little piece here. And uh, I'm just going to put it down there. I've got a little bit of glue there. And I'm just going to put it here. It might not belong there, who knows, but that's where I'm putting it. Squeeze out some of the glue and you can see with its black outlines just how striking that is. And if I pull this over, see how it kind of like complements it because they're, they're all really, really bold. And then I've got to go for my centres and decide which centre goes where. I'm actually going to go with that one there and I'm going to go with that one there. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put down a blob of glue. I've got my poke tool here somewhere. It's hiding from me. There it is. Not my poke tool, my uh, my dibby doo -da. I'm trying to trying to get a feel for this yeah and put that on there and I'm going to put that one there and then I want some more glue in the middle to put the other little bits that are supposed to go on top so I reckon this one should go here so there's just a little bit of that yellow sticking out There. I'm quite happy with that. I've got all of my bits of leaves and whatnot here. And uh, what I'm going to do is, <laughs> because my mat is absolutely filthy and so are my hands, I'm just going to tidy this up and come back when I'm tidy. All right, so I stuck the base down just with some uh, double-sided tape. And then it's just a matter of, uh, obviously, arranging the bits where you want them. So, you know, I might have a flower there for example, and might come in there just slightly off the edge of um, of the stenciling. Now, I think I want these raised up. I'm not sure. I might and I might not. And then, of course, I've got the flower stems that I did, and that can go into there. And I can actually drop this down so that there'd be space up at the top for a sentiment. And then I've got that one. So I think what I might do is come right to the lower edge with that. Whoops. Like my glue stick first. And then I want that to be slightly above it. So I'm going to keep that one there. I mean, there's room for a sentiment. And then sort of like mask the fact that if I move that up there, that that one doesn't reach to the bottom, I can just put in a few more leaves. I 
from my poor Emma. So, anyway, composition, composition. I'm just going to glue it down and I'll be straight back. Right, so I glued a couple of the leaves down and I've decided that this one is going to um, go there. I just used Dollar Tree glue in a, a needle tip bottle. And I never kind of glue everything down because it's nice to have a little bit of movement on a card, I think. And also the opportunity, should it arise, to um, tuck anything else underneath because... We can all look at something and think, oh no, you know, I wish I could do so and so there, but it's too late, you've glued it down flat. So I tend to just glue the um, bottom end of a stem. I don't know if you can see that. And um, I'm actually going to be, I think, yeah, I'm going to pop that there. So I've got some nice height because it is um, an eight inch slim line. And then I have gone ahead and I put double-sided foam pad on the back also from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to pop that one so that it's kind of like, I don't know, just a little bit skew if going off the edge. And with this one, I can see where the end of the stem is. So I can hide that in a petal go off the edge as well there that is where I'm going to go right. I need to pop that up and I've got space up there for a sentiment but um, my camera <laughs> is not going to fit the whole thing in so I'm going sideways but you can see just by putting that black outline on that flower let's see if we can get good clarity how striking it is against that black and white boldness of that stencil and it just completely changes it if you actually go to the website and look at this it's all pretty and I don't know if it's lemon or pink that it's done in and it's fabulous as pretty but you can also do something you know quite striking in a bit mixed media if you change the materials that you're using so anyway that's what i've got for you this friday and i do hope you have an absolutely awesome weekend i hope i made up for tuesday and all the little things that i've made this week and apparently we will have rain so i shall go out and pray for rain uh, while sitting on the deck obviously so that i don't get wet myself but have an absolutely wonderful weekend i'll be up on monday with who knows what as usual all links below and thank you so much for watching bye